and gentlemen, may I please have your attention. The show starts in 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. You are now live with BB3TV. Hey guys, thanks for joining me. I appreciate y'all being here. Hey, if you get a chance to, guys, please hit that share button. Let's get this thing out there. Uh, we're going to talk about Gettysburg today, guys. Again, sh surprise, surprise, right? But this is my favorite subject, of course. Um, I, I I live and breathe Gettysburg. So um, today we are we are actually broadcasting uh, for the first time over on uh, Gettysburg Past and Present. So a huge thank you to uh, Pam, Russ, and and other administrators and and uh, folks over there. So sincerely do appreciate you having me. Um, we're gonna we're gonna dig in, guys. We're gonna talk a, a lot tonight about Gettysburg and and uh, the really cool uh, things that you can do. We're gonna talk about the battle and we're gonna talk about how it all just kind of comes to fruition and and uh, where we are now. So guys, if you can tell me where you're uh, watching from, if I can't see your name, if you show up here as a Facebook user, just go ahead and please just type your name in there. Now I know you guys probably won't be able to, to see that. Um, I'll let you know if I can't read it. So how you doing, Lori? Thanks for joining me. I appreciate it. Hey, Gretchen, as always, thanks for jumping in. And the wife. Hey, uh, there's Tom. What's going on? Facebook user. I love Gettysburg too. Very much. It's actually kind of ridiculous. All right. We're checking in from New Jersey. Thanks for jumping in. There's Stacy. How you doing, Stacy? Thanks for jumping in. Appreciate it. Um, so um, what I want to do is, guys, uh, I am going to post in the uh, in the comment section a link to the show. So if you want to jump in and have a, a ask me a question or talk a little bit, or if you're not afraid of being camera shy, or you can jump in here with me and uh, we could talk for a few minutes and I can answer some of your questions. Uh, so checking out from North Carolina. Thanks for jumping in. Appreciate it. Philly. Oh yeah. All right. Of course, Philly is the, the home of brotherly love. All right. Cincinnati. So we're checking in from across the country, guys. Thank you so much for being here. I appreciate it. Um, so real quick, I'm going to go ahead and snag this link and uh, we're going to go ahead and post this in the comment section. So if you see, bam, there we go. That link will put you into the show with me. So if you want to jump in here, have a quick conversation, talk a little bit about Gettysburg, tell me what you love about it. And if you have a question or just tell me what you love about Gettysburg in the comment section and, uh, you know, we'll we'll take it from there. It seems my comment is unreadable. No. I, oh, no. I see you there. You're good. And uh, your picture looks great. It's good to see you. So for me, guys, Gettysburg started um, when I was just a kid, my dad used to take us to Gettysburg and, you know, some of my earliest pictures and some of my earliest memories, um, are of Gettysburg, you know, I, it's a cardinal sin, uh, believe me, uh, but we didn't know back then, but you know, my dad put us up on the cannons and, you know, we took our, he took our, our photographs and stuff like that. So from a very young age, I've, uh, I have photographic evidence of me being a bad guy sitting on, uh, cannons. Of course I was small at the time. So don't hold that against me. Um, why is your name not showing up? I have no idea who you are. So once you type your name in, maybe I can answer you better. <laughs> it's something to do with allowing permissions, or it also depends upon what platform you're watching from. So that could have something to do with it. How's it going, Don from Dun Cannon? Shane. Oh, I don't know. Dude, yeah, usually you do show up. So I don't know. I, I, I couldn't tell you. I'm not sure what platform you're watching on. So really quick, guys. Uh, for those of you watching who are Civil War reenactors or, or you guys are following closely with what I'm doing with the um, 160th Battle of Gettysburg reenactment, I just posted a video of the land. Um, I was, I've was i kind of held off on it because it really does need edited. Um, it's 20 minutes of just me driving around the property. It is, it's a beautiful, uh, beautiful piece of land. So go when you get an opportunity, go check that out. Um, and I, I think you'll be really excited with what we're working with out there for the 160th Battle of Gettysburg reenactment. But that's not what today is all about, guys. Today, I do want to talk a lot about, you know, Gettysburg from, you know, 
different perspectives. You know, so here, hey, there's Jim. How's it going, brother? It's good to see you, man. Um, so for me, like I said, I Gettysburg started with me very young and my father would take us over there and, and he would, you know, he was a huge history nerd. You know, he used to sit us in front of the TV and we'd watch like uh, uh, Victory at Sea and things like that, which, you know, has nothing to do with the Civil War. It's World War II, but very history oriented father. And and he kind of instilled that in into us as kids. But um, really, Gettysburg took off for me, as, as maybe a lot of you guys watching you know, when the movie Gettysburg came out, you know, um, I don't even remember how old I was. I was just a kid in, in school and um, uh, I had a, a substitute teacher um, and some of you guys knew him. His name was Don Aston, um, and Don was a member of the 45th Pennsylvania reenacting group. And um, he was a background artist in the movie Gettysburg. So he was our substitute teacher for science class. And he started talking about you know, this, this movie, you know, and civil war reenacting. I'm like, what is this? You know, I'm like, wow, okay, this is really neat. But if we keep them talking, we're not going to talk science. So let's just keep them talking. So I was asking him questions left and right. It, it had little less to do with caring about Gettysburg at that time uh, than it did not just really hating, you know, science class and, and not wanting to deal with that. But it really took off from there. Um, his stories were so riveting and so fascinating. And he would talk about, you know, these big name actors and, um, Oh, there you go, Shane. So if you're going to use YouTube, um, I can see you and your smiling face. Hey D thanks for jumping in. Um, and if you guys can please share this video out. Um, I definitely appreciate if you would do that, hit that share button and get that out there for me. Thank you so much. Um, came out in 1993 the year you started reenacting okay who is that if you could tell me what your name is i appreciate it um so 93 i mean do the math i'm 43 now um but so don don really got us like just i was riveted listening to his stories and um and then he said you know why don't you come out and come out to come out to an event and um Oh, you don't have to share it to BB3. I'm already live on BB3. <laughs> thank you. Tom is uh, Tom is one of the owners of BB3 TV. So thank you so much, Tom, for always allowing me to come on here and uh, rock and roll on the network. I do appreciate that. Um, Charles Irish Rush. I, Russ. Say that three times real quick. Charles Irish Russ. Okay. That's a tongue twister. Um, so, you know, he said, come on out. And, uh, I got, I had to get permission from my mother. My mom was all too happy to get rid of me at the time. So, um, I'll do, I'll stop. I'm going to blush. Um, my, uh, Hey, uh, mama, two books. Thank you. Thank you for sharing. Um, she, my mom was all too happy to get rid of me. So we went, my very first event was Leesburg, Virginia. Now, I don't remember what we were reenacting. So, because any is if anybody on here was at Leesburg, Virginia, when we did a reenactment some like 20 plus years ago, 30, I don't know, it was 30 years. Um, tell me what that was. I'm thinking it might have been Antietam. I can't remember. All I remember was it was really cool. I was I was shooting a musket and really I was like in all of what we were doing. So that that is really where my passion for uh um wait i just noticed the bb3 tv youtube has 69 subs <laughs> insert butthead there you go uh we need to get that up we have to get that up so go to youtube bb3 tv and hit that subscribe button guys there's so much awesome entertainment over there i mean if you love paranormal and yeah, go go check it out because we got the paranormal brew taryn kerper she does she has an awesome paranormal show um, she brings on celebrity uh, guests. It's really a really good time. Really good. Check that out. Um, you can go check out. This is Tom's world. You, you know, you got Dom and Tom, you know, just a ton of variety entertainment over there on BB3 TV. So definitely go check that out. All right. There's your plug, Tom. Um, so back to Gettysburg. Uh, it, it, it became this passion for me. And then, you know, once I went there, like as soon as I went to Gettysburg as, as like a young adult, you know, not with my dad, it was just me kind of on my own it's weird. I, it, 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 it's like, I felt like I was a part of that place. And I think a lot of you watching this, who've been to Gettysburg and who understand that really you kind of under, there's like a connection between you in that place when you step there and it's, it's almost palpable. You can feel that presence when you're on the battlefield. Now people are going to be like, well, that's the paranormal, you know, or, or whatever, but I have to be honest with you. 
I have never experienced a single thing on that battlefield that I could ever like say is paranormal. Now I will say this: that Taryn Kerper, who I just mentioned um, on on the Par uh, Paranormal Brew, she took a photograph from the railroad cut bridge, and I, if I could find it, I would uh, post it. It's probably the most compelling photograph that I've ever seen. It's not doctored. She took this picture, and I can't remember which direction she was facing. I think it was up towards Hers Ridge, and there is a a hollow looking man standing on the side of the railroad tracks. I mean, you can see right through them and it is clearly Confederate garb. I mean, it is the neatest thing. So hard for me to explain, hard for me to explain, but um, you know, I don't know how you feel about the paranormal, but it's interesting. All right. So Shane, your first event was the one twenty fifth. That That was a big event. Actually, that was a pretty big, if I remember correctly, that was a very big event. So this is my wife. So I, I I got her started first night. Got me hooked. I remember how cold it was, and being excited. Then hearing men singing, it was worth it. Oh, that's right. That was a that was a a, a reenactment. I think right, honey. Um, Sharpsburg would have been Antietam. Something. Yeah, Leesburg has a small battlefield along the river, and its name escapes me. Um, I can't remember. Uh, one of the only cities I can walk around in my uniform and people not <laughs> look at you weird. <laughs> It's it's not it's not the uniform they're looking at. I think it's just you, dude. No, but I love you. Um, I have only had the honor of being in Gettysburg once, but had the privilege to meet you, Taryn, and everyone else. Oh yeah, Dom too. Yeah, the, you know. But dude, that was a great time. And and what Tom's talking about was there was the battlefield bash, and it was like this whole paranormal thing, and uh, everybody got together. It was just a really fun time. But um, so in the comment section, guys, if you're here and you're, you've been to Gettysburg, tell me what you love about Gettysburg. Tell me what you like to experience. Tell me what your favorite place is. Again, nobody's clicked on here. You guys afraid to come into the show and hang out and talk for a few minutes? Come on, click the button. Um, all right. Who is this Facebook user? Just got on here, buddy. You might want to put your name up there, although that sounds like John Andy. I don't know. <laughs> um, so for me, I just became like enamored with the place. And I honestly, I couldn't, I called it. Yep. It's, it's, it's Johnny boy. Uh, I, I, I really couldn't get enough of it. So I, I almost, it's like, I almost became, you know, like I may as well have just gotten an apartment there. And so many times I considered it. I mean, I have moved so many times over the past like 10 years that I really should have just gotten a freaking place in Gettysburg. Um, I can tell you that the ride to Gettysburg had a lot of corn. <laughs> yeah. Well, I guess for you as a, as a city boy, you're not used to all this corn and fields and all that stuff around us. So, all right. So whoever this Facebook user is little round top and Barlow's Knoll. I love Barlow's Knoll. It's one of those, like, like it's the, one of the least places that people visit because everybody kind of hits those, those like, touristy areas you know little round top devil's den um you know in, in in that area the valley of death and the peach orchard and you know and they pretty much stay in that area and you, and you get over to the first day mcpherson's ridge and um reynolds woods and all those things like that but one of the big draws is the eternal peace you know memorial which is a beautiful beautiful structure um that was dedicated by uh uh franklin i think it was franklin delano or was it theodore roosevelt which roosevelt was it um, but, um, it wasn't frankly, it was Theodore. It was Teddy. I think it was Theodore Roosevelt that, that dedicated that monument and the top and, and the eternal light peace memorial is really, it's, it's really neat because, um, the nor the North, the, 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 the upper section, the shaft, the upper portion of that thing is made from, um, I think that's Alabama limestone and the bottom is, is uh, main granite or is it reversed? I mean, I know it's something to that. So it was Franklin. It was Franklin. It was FDR. Um, okay. Yes. The history is amazing. And so the first day battlefield in the apartment complex, they were talking about what, what, what apartment complex where are you? Is this like over on hers Ridge? Um, I'm not, who am I talking to here? Facebook user, if you could put your name up there, I'd appreciate it. Um, yeah, that I didn't hear anything about that, but I would certainly love to look into that. I mean, cause to be completely honest with you out of the Gettysburg event next year, depending on how well we do, 
um, in terms of number of spectators and things like that, I would really, really love to purchase land and, and save it and protect it. So that's the true Shane. How you been? Irish yell and etching, praying for success for this event. We we're raising a battalion for it. For me, it was Culp's Hill and Saks Covered Bridge. Saks Bridge is an awesome place, but you know, uh, I'm sure you've all heard the myth uh, about Saks Bridge where somebody started this random story about Saks Bridge uh, being haunted and then it being had been used by it was used by Longstreet's Corps uh, during his um, exodus from Gettysburg. They did cross over that bridge, but um, the story goes is he also hung three deserters from the rafters of that bridge. That that has not been documented. That there's no evidence that that's remotely true. Um, I, I think that is just another one of those like random Gettysburg myths, but so many people believe that, um, you know, but I will say that there has been a lot of shady stuff that have, has gone on out there. Um, a lot of people, they were worshiping Satan out there. They were doing like devil worshiping. And at one time, you know, you could go out there and there was like this big like pentagram or whatever on the, I mean, it was awful, you know, but it, you know, but now you're only allowed out there, I think, till the sun goes down and then the, their park service or somebody police will come in and kick you out of there, which is probably good. Um, I would like to know more about this apartment complex, though. All right. So Gretchen uh, says, I've been to Gettysburg many times, really can't say what my favorite moment and place is. Well, maybe it's just the whole place. You know, I, I know for me, a lot of that, it's kind of the whole place. So um uh okay so whoever i i can't message you because i don't know who you are you're showing up here as facebook user um i will start the photos stuff here soon i got a picture pulled up i'm going to talk about rose farm shocker um so if you want me to message you i don't i don't know who you are so all right so the american battlefield trust just sent an email out i'm i am gonna have to start following that a little bit closer um and asking people to send letters to stop it. That's good. And we should do that. Okay. So you can, attest. who is this Facebook user who can attest to it being haunted? If you don't hide behind your anonymity on here. Okay. I want to know who I'm talking to. So Facebook user, you can attest to it being haunted. I'm interested in hearing how, what's your story. Um, so the drive from Wrightsville Bridge to Gettysburg proper and knowing troops were all along that route. Love that drive as a kid and still do. So I actually live about 10 minutes from the Columbia Wrightsville bridge. Um, and, and to be honest, Mike Belgi and I have many times of, uh, and we were going to put on, if we could not get Gettysburg put together because of COVID and other things, we had been talking about doing a burning of the Columbia Wrightsville bridge event. Now, I mean, that's been done in the past. Um, I, I, they've, they've, I would say they've done a pretty decent job at it. Um, but, you know, I, we want to kind of get our hands on that and do a little bit of something with that. So that's going to be in the pipeline in the future. Um, it, it's just one of them Gettysburg campaign stories that needs to be, you know, told and, and people need to learn about that. And, you know, and there was, I think there was one casualty. It was a black man um, who had his head completely taken off by a piece of artillery. Um, and I, if I'm not mistaken, he'd never been given a real, a proper burial. Um, anybody knows anything about that, Jim, maybe if you know something about that, pop it up here, but, um, we were going to do like a little dedication, a little, you know, we, we kind of have a pretty good idea where the earthworks were, where he was killed. So, um, Belgi had the idea of going in there, taking some of the dirt out and, and actually doing a burial service because obviously there's nothing left of the man, unfortunately, but, um, taking some of the ground where he died and, 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 uh, and doing like a, a, a funeral service for him um, because he's a hero, you know, he's, he's a hero. Okay. Um, I'm good. Facebook. He's my face. My favorite place in Gettysburg is the peach orchard. Peach orchard was, um, it was like a sea of death. And, and, you know, again, it's another one of those places and you hear a, a lot about the peach orchard, um, you know, when, um, you know, history and, the, and, and, and guides talk about it, how it's just another one of those places like the wheat field where you couldn't put your foot down on that field without stepping on 
somebody who was either dead, badly wounded or, or something. So it was just a sea of carnage. And, and this is one of the things that really gets me about Gettysburg. You know, when you go out there, you've got to have this appreciation for that place because there was so much agony on that field. Like the, I mean, people lost their lives fighting for something that they believed in. And, and this, and this is why, and I don't want to harp on the event too much here. I really want to keep the focus solely on Gettysburg proper, but um, this is why I'm so adamant about sticking to my guns when it comes to setting standards for the event. You know, it, it, some people think they're high or too high or whatever, but really guys, it's not about that. It's not about us. It's, it's really, it's about them. And when you stand on that field and you just stand there in silence, if you've never done it, if you've never done it, um, you need to. Um, you need to stand out there and just be quiet and feel the energy of the place and understand that there was a massive struggle right there. And so many people lost their lives. That is why we have to do the best job that we could possibly do at these civil war reenactments, not a mainstream, not a hardcore, a civil war reenactment of the battle of Gettysburg. I'm beating that one up to get used to it. All right, Don says, my dad took us to Gettysburg to run around and play, uh, get us out of the house. That's a good way to burn some energy. We took our kids to Devil's Den all the time. They, you, you, you take the kids to Devil's Den, let them guys climb boulders, forget about it. How can I send a screenshot to me? Uh, send a screenshot to uh, my messenger. Just send it to me in messenger and um, I will get it here on my phone and I'll take a look at it. Um. I think for most of us, uh, Gettysburg is the high watermark for the Confederacy and the 135th is probably the best event for me and a lot of us due to the enormity of troops. I, I was there, if I remember correctly, and I think there was something to the effect of 15,000 Confederates, literally just waves of Confederates coming across that field. And that is as close to accurate as you could ever imagine it being like, it blows my mind to this day, the, the sheer number of people who participated in that event. It, I, Wow. So you watched a cigarette being held in the air and it being dragged down to nothing. That You must be talking about sex bridge. I've heard that out there. In, a matter of fact, I actually, um, I've seen that. So you sent me a message on Messenger. Let me take a look at this. Jake. Okay. So that's who I'm talking to. Okay, so this September Cumberland Township officials will be rolling on a, a proposed development. Okay, I'm going to take a look at that. Thank you for sending that to me, Jake. I appreciate that. What the heck is this spam shit? Keep this stuff off of my page, please. We don't need that crap here. Vominos. Um, so you also saw several Union soldiers walking on the bridge at 11 p.m. Oh, that's interesting. Did you get any actual evidence of that? That's the question. All right. So start at John Wright restaurant that uh, would, should rather, they would know. Yes. All right. So you had an experience in Perryville a few years back. Okay. I've never had a, a paranormal experience on the battlefield. Um, I don't know. And maybe I'm closed off to it. I don't know. I, I keep telling people that I haven't had paranormal experiences. And then some people are like, yes, you have, Dustin. You told us this, this or whatever. But no, I, just, I haven't. I mean, I've seen one thing that like recently, uh, not on the battlefield. It was at, at my accountant's place. Um, I could have sworn I saw somebody looking at me through the bathroom door. And then I fell on my ass and ripped my cr you know, jeans open. And, you know, it was completely embarrassing. But we won't even get one of that. But so now here we are, we're at Gettysburg. All right. And, you know, so Gettysburg has really kind of transformed, obviously, from being a civil war town. Now, get think about it. This Gettysburg wouldn't even be on the map if it wasn't for what happened there during the Civil War. Maybe, maybe something could have happened later that, that put it on the map. But here it is now. Gettysburg is the Mecca of the Civil War. It really is. I mean, it's the it's the high watermark of the Confederacy. It's is you know, the Army of Northern Virginia never made it any further north than Gettysburg, although there were elements of, of Jeb Stewart's cavalry that went as far out north as Carlisle and Hanover and, and, and some of these other areas. So technically, the, 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 I, if I'm not mistaken, I think there were even elements of Confederates who made it as far north as Maine. 
correct me if I'm wrong on that. Some of you Civil War nerds out there. Um, so one of my favorite times at Gettysburg was being out in the middle of the field, looking at the high water mark with a, a nice, that, that is so beautiful. Go out there early in the morning. Um, so I've had several, but the more important is the memory of those who gave their lives. Amen. Really, that is the true, a true ex Gettysburg experience when you go out there. So look, th think about this. The guys, you go out there, there's names that like bloody run. Okay. That's Plum Run Creek, but they called it bloody run. Why do you think they call I mean, how much blood would have to flow into that Creek for it to be recognized as bloody run? That's a lot. And that's a lot. And there's photographs of, you know what, if you, if you guys can be patient with me for one second, I will pull this photo up. If it's easily, of course I saw it earlier. So me trying to find it now, it'll take me half an hour, but there was a picture of a, a Confederate who lost his life in the slaughter pen. Probably there we go. Let me click that. And let's pull this up. Um, I will try to do a screen share. Just give me a sec. Okay, that's not going to let me do it. Okay, well, anyway, there was a Confederate who was shot in, in Plum Run Creek. It's going to... Let's try this here. Okay, wait a second. Yeah, there we go. Hmm. I'll stop that one. We'll do a new one. Bear with me here, guys. Okay, I will pull this up. And we'll scroll down together. How's that? Okay, Battle of Gettysburg, second day. And this is where the photograph was. Let's see if we can find it. Now it's not going to work. If I don't do this slow enough, it will. There we go. So look down here. Okay. This is a dead Confederate in Plum Run Creek. Okay. This is the, this, he died and he bled out in the Creek. And he is one of the reasons why they call it bloody run. So, I mean, when you go there, you've got to, you've really got to, you know, take a book with you. Um, and, and look, guys, I'm literally sitting here with my photograph book of Gettysburg. Okay. And anybody who, you know, anybody who knows anything about Gettysburg knows that, okay, William Frasnito's work on the photography at Gettysburg was very extensive, but he wasn't able to find every photograph which is good for me because that's what I love to do. And um, I've, I've worked very hard and I found four different photograph locations. And some of those I, I found in, in um, concert with a friend of mine and together we found the Burns Rock. I um, mean, and, and that's a tough one. And I know people are like, whatever, trust me, if you ever want to come out there with me, I will show you the Burns Rock and we'll just put your doubts to rest. But, you know, I get made fun of because, you know, well, there should be a boulder there and there's not a boulder. <laughs> Everything else is there, but there's not a boulder. But I can show you a quarry at the site where Warstone was quarried. And I think I actually was the one who made the discovery of that quarry. It hadn't been documented. Um, it was at a very random place. Uh, so, you know, you can't make that argument in saying that, well, there should be a boulder there. Boulders were destroyed all over the park to make a roadbed, you know. And, and if you start saying things like, well, if you have to explain where this boulder went, it's not right. That is just really... That's not the right way to think. You've got to have a little bit more of, an, more of an open mind. I think, you know, when you're looking at things like this, especially if everything else works because one boulder is missing. I can show you a photograph right here. Um, very easy. Um, of, of this photograph right here. Okay. I don't know if you guys can see this, how clear this is. There is a boulder right here. This boulder right beside this man who lost his life, that boulder is gone. It doesn't exist anymore. Why does that exist? Why doesn't that exist? They built a trolley line through there. 
they destroyed the boulder. That boulder should be there. So it, the argument, it just doesn't hold water, in my opinion. Um, okay, so I've had several, but more importantly, yes, we're, we're, we're heading back down. So ghosts, ghosts don't exist, and anything outside of that is straight up disrespectful. Never saw a ghost dinosaur. <laughs> Wouldn't that be something to see a ghost dinosaur? That, that is funny. Uh, nobody's ever put it to me like that. That's kind of interesting. But, I, you, but you know, people do see ghost dogs. People see ghost cats. People are visited. You know, it was Native American. This entire country was Native American land. Um, total K outright. BC and Martin's regimental strengths and losses 7,000 K outright. That doesn't even count like the mortally wounded or, or not mortally wounded, but the, the grievously wounded and people who have been maimed for the rest of their lives, just outright casualties that didn't die, but absolutely. All right. Hey, 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 can you please send me the outline for the event? So I know what I should pack. Um, get with me after this. Um, I'll, you know, I'll talk more about this. Also guys be here on Tuesday at six o'clock. We are going to talk about, we're, it's all about the event on Tuesday. Uh, today, I kind of want to focus on things that you can do in Gettysburg, um, you know, things like that. I kind of want to keep the focus on the town and and some of the stuff that you can do there. So we'll talk a little bit more about the event on Tuesday. So definitely want to be there for that. Um, Gettysburg and all the battlefields are heartbreaking. Anyone who's sensitive knows. I live close to Gris, Griswoldville in middle Georgia and the Federals burn the entire town. Nothing is left. The battlefield is so sorrowful, I can imagine. Gettysburg is much the same. It's it really is. And look, I've set foot on many, 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 many battlefields. I mean, Petersburg, Fredericksburg, uh, Spotsylvania, um, Shiloh, and you know Franklin, and all these battlefields that we've toured. And every single one of them has that same overwhelming feeling. You know, especially when you study the battle and you kind of know a little bit about what happened there. Now, granted, you can never really truly grasp it because we weren't there. We didn't witness it. We didn't experience that horror, but, um, but knowing a little bit about it, it really makes you um, really, it's a, it's just a, it's a feeling that you get in your gut and it's just really hard to dismiss. Um, the piles of dead horses. I mean, can you imagine what Gettysburg would have been like on July 4th, 5th, 6th? I mean, good Lord. Oh, it's the rock. Yes. You got, I took a pic, you know, I found these sites just driving past them with my camera and stuck it out the window and said, there it is. Peter would love me for saying that. Um, so been there for sunrises, been there for sunsets. It's the energy. And yes, the different locations have different feels. Absolutely. You can't just drive in your car and say there, that's gotta be Peter. Yeah. <laughs> oh, thank you, honey. It's me, Jamie. Oh, what's up, James? Um, there is awesome history there. So much death and destruction. Truly, truly, truly. Uh, you said that, James, you said the dinosaur. <laughs> That's still funny. My great great grandfather uh, fought with the 194th New York Volunteer Infantry. I had one ancestor fight with Ambrose's Cav on the uh, Confederate side, one fight with Bucktails, and one with the uh, Fifth German Rifles. Holy crap! That is one heck of a lineage. Mm, Franklin just slays you. Franklin was an amazing place. And 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 uh, the was the Carter House um, shot to hell and all those bullet holes that are still in the side. It is just all inspiring. And um, yeah, and and the fact and they did some great archaeological work up there. And uh, to see those earthworks right where they were. Um, and, and to, you know, my buddy Lee and I, we, we stood on either side. He's a Confederate reenactor and I'm a union guy. And I stood on the union side of the works and he stood on the Confederate side of the works. And we kind of raised our fists at each other. It was a, it was a cool little picture that we took. I think you can see Burns Rock if you just move your head. There it is. Hey there. Oh, there, well, there you guys. There it is, guys. If you look down here at Lee McGinnis's, that is Franklin. We are at that. That is what we're, I just said there. His picture is of us standing over those works. And uh, as I was just saying, so kind of good timing for you to show up, Lee. Uh, it's what made horse thieving a punishment of death. Yes. 
I found out something cool the other day. Did you, Daniel Boone's G nephew is, did you, did I know Daniel Boone's nephews on? No, I didn't know that. It Carlton mansion. Yes. Very cool. Anyway, um, all, all this stuff, it, it really leads up to, you know, why do we do what we do? And, you know, as reenactors or even as people who just love this history and you're like, you know, why do you love it so much? It's a, it's a war. It was death. It was, we were torn apart as a country. It, I, we're really no less torn apart now. You know, I mean, it, it, we're handling things to, in, in this country differently now than we did back then, you know, but turmoil has always existed, but it, like for anything, you know, uh, you have to have respect for both North and South, not because, you know, they supported slavery or, you know, but, but the, the United States Congress has recognized these Confederate soldiers as United States veterans. So they are veterans of the United States and, uh, you know, and they deserve the same res respect, you know, and when you come out here just to, to immerse yourself in the history, it's important that you connect with that too. So let's jump, let's switch the, let's switch tracks here a little bit. Um, all right, there's uh, there's so much as to the why. There is no simple answer. True story, no no a true story. Um, and and speaking of dinosaurs, since you wanted to bring up dinosaurs, if you go to South, I think what is it, South Confederate Avenue, there is a bridge on South Confederate Avenue that has fossilized dinosaur footprints on the bridge, and I I don't know if it's ever actually been verified that those are legitimate, but they certainly look like it something pretty cool to see you should go just one of those fun little side things you can do at gettysburg is it a fact lee is it a fact uh dinosaurs lived when the world was flat so now that it's around the dinosaur goes fall off the edge <laughs> crash and stop oh, that's so funny but where's the ghost yeah if it fell up where's the ghost yeah that's what james says um gettysburg has so much to do you've okay you know, not just the battlefield, but there's a lot of experiences that you can have. You can go to, um, you know, the 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 old wax museum, uh, which is the Heritage Center, and there's all kinds of information there. They have programs there. Um, you can you can book a tour guide and and be like you know taken on a tour. You can do Segway tours and and ride around on those weird looking Segways. You can rent a scooter and go see the battlefield that way. You know, or just take your bike out there or strap a backpack on and hike. There's so much to see. But what I want to recommend to you as somebody who does this all the time, park your car. All right. Load up on bug spray. And I mean, load up because ticks are ridiculous at Gettysburg. Um, load up on bug spray and get off the beaten path because there's so much more to see. There's rock carvings. Go on the Dustin tour. Who said that? It's a good tour. I do give a good tour, but I'm not, you know, a licensed battlefield guide. Men fought and died for what they believed in. Uh, they were all brothers, fathers, cousins, sons, and um, and more. It's time we stand up and protect our history. Amen. This nation is destroying our history and trying to erase it. I'm living monument. Uh, I am a living monument. Can't tear me down. Amen. Amen. God bless. <laughs> um, but it is important that we remember and protect our history. Um, you know, regardless of what you believe in, you know, politics aside, um, you know, we are all Americans and we all share this history. Um, and it is, it is, it is absolutely important, um, that we don't forget these things, which is why we hold civil war reenactments, because it is so important to kind of give you that visual so you remember that this was an awful, awful experience, a horrible time for this country. And and husbands and sons and you know brothers and fathers, these guys all lost their lives. They never made it home. So we have we have such a responsibility, you know, to properly teach about the civil war and the struggles. But it's not just the battles. Okay. If you you could find these really interesting like human interest stories that, you know, I mean, the Tilly Pierce story, her story's great. She wrote a book, What a Girl Saw and Heard at Gettysburg, a cool little book about what she saw at Gettysburg. Now, some folks say she probably embellished a little bit. Maybe she did. She wrote it many, many years later. So memory's never the same. But, you know, you got Josephine Miller. Um, you got Jenny Wade. These are cool stories. And you can go and walk through the cemetery. And, and what's really neat, you know, there was a guy 
Um, and and uh, Jamie, if you can, um, yeah, my roast my, my roast farm tour is on point, man. Thank you. Boots on the ground. That's right. That's the only way to do it. Um, that yes, especially the tree. That tree is legit, and I'm gonna we're gonna talk about that here in the last like 15 minutes. Um, it, it is so important that we honor and remember the sacrifices that were made out here because if if we don't learn from our past we're doomed to repeat it you know um you've all heard that saying before so we have a duty to save what has been left here for us we are the stewards of this history um and uh, i i take it very personally um which is why i i want to do this any people ask me too why would you want to take on such an event like this why would you even want to consider doing something like this well one because i do love civil war reenacting i love it um um and it's 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 not just the history of being immersed in it um there is a camaraderie among civil war reenactors um and and i don't care what side of the aisle you're on when it comes to mainstream and i hate those terms we're, we're so done using them or campaigners but you know these you know it's a it, it's a different discipline um and there's a place for improvement on no matter where you are but it, there is a camaraderie um and it, there's just something about sitting at that campfire at night with a, a bunch of like-minded people and you're just sitting there telling lies to each other. <laughs> uh, thank you, Tom Truett for that one. Um, you know, just bullshitting and, and telling good old stories from, from reenactments of, of gone by and, you know, but then talking about the history and, you know, it's, it's talking about those things and remembering them that keep the memory of these guys alive. And uh, that is why it is so, so important um, we keep doing what we're doing. So, and, and Lee says, you can't sweep it under the rug. I still remember how both sides came together after the Cedar Creek incident. I missed that. Yeah, that's right. The Cedar Creek incident. And uh, let me back up here. What Lee's talking about, for those of you that might not know, at, at a Cedar Creek, it, which these guys hold a reenactment on the actual battlefield. How cool is that? Uh, God, if we could only do that at Gettysburg, how amazing would that be? Um, really truly um amazing but um what happened was is there was a bomb threat at at cedar creek and um and both sides of the reenacting both sides of the hobby just came together they kind of unified and really um showed solidarity through that whole incident and that was truly something um so i want to give a shout out to the sons of confederate veterans and legion riders for protecting us last year when we Laid to rest two brothers from the Civil War that were forgotten and brought home and buried next to each other. Uh, absolutely, that's outstanding. Hey, they just uh, had the Battle of Richmond, Kentucky a few days ago. Oh, awesome. I remember when the Union was defeated at Gettysburg, said by a drunk CSA reactor. John, is that you again? Uh, my friends were there. <laughs> yeah. Um, so we're, we're stewards of the history and, and, you know, uh, we've, we've got a huge responsibility to tell the story and do it, do it as, as appropriately as possible. So guys, really quick, I want to jump into one of the, my favorite, favorite things to do. Okay. Um, at Gettysburg is really hunt down these photograph, these photograph mysteries. Um, so I am going to share again, um, a photograph. Um, I'm going to, stop sharing this give me a sec and unfortunately i you can only do one at a time okay this photograph okay i'm gonna make this full screen this photograph you see how it is kind of twitching back and forth all right this is called a stereo and, and what they did with these stereo views during the Civil War, um, it was basically you took, it was like one side. Uh, it better not be HOD. <laughs> no, it's not the HOD. We're not even going, we're not touching the HOD right now. Um, but one side of the photograph, um, it was taken one side to the other. There's two photographs taken. And it created a three-dimensional image um, that, that, that you could put on a viewer 
and watch and look at this this photograph and in depth in in this like really cool three dimensional you know thing for for the time frame for the time like 1863 this this was really high speed technology so it was kind of neat which is now, now you see that you're looking at both sides of the stereo view when it clicks back and forth like that now if you were to look at it in stereo through the, the actual viewer you would see that that is a three dimensional thing so anyway now in in uh Frazanito's book early photography at Gettysburg um there is a whole series of Confederate dead that were taken on um, the Rose Farm. And um, there was a few of these pictures that they had never really been able to determine the uh, location of these photographs. Well, uh, long story short is, and this is one of the hardest ones I, I have actually worked on. And um, I, I just started looking at the, the photos of the known photographs that we have of the entire pasture. And what happens is, is you realize that Gardner or O'Sullivan, they photographed the entire pasture. And out of the entire pasture, there is literally only one lone standing tree that was photographed. And it's this tree that you see here on the screen. That tree is the only photograph that was taken, um, or excuse me, the only tree that was photographed in inside. But what you can do here, and, and see if you guys can follow my arrow here. Can you see my arrow? This this line of trees, this little hedgerow back here um, is the only real terrain feature, but you can see that in all of the other photographs. And right, I don't know if you can see this, but right back here through that tree line, there's a little bit of a hill. There's like a little peak back there. Um, and that little peak actually set it in stone for me. When I found that, um, that basically set it in stone for me. But um, I, I trying to find this picture was difficult because, well, there's an old tree there. Okay, that's great. But what do you see? There's, there's a man closest to the tree and you can see his guts kind of, you can see right into his, his torso. Um, again, if you look up here to the right hand side of the screen, you see the parental advisory um, is advised. <laughs> Keep that in mind when you're showing this to young children that there are dead bodies on the screen. Um, but there is only two instances that were documented where bodies had been mutilated by pigs. This being one of them, the other being um, the body of a Confederate who was laying between two rocks who you can see his rib cage and his arm was eaten away and his hand is laying there and, and the photographers used a prop and uh, they, they propped um, they, they, they propped uh, this cannon, this artillery shell um, right beside him. And they, and they sold that as him having been hit by a piece of artillery. Um, and let me see if I can actually go and find you that photograph. And um, he was the only other instance where he was a, a, a person was actually eaten by pigs. So, but I want to show you this instead of trying to find it. This is that lone tree. This is the other angle that it was photographed. Okay. I don't know if you can see it. It's not very clear. But this tree is the only lone standing tree. So that's how I kind of determined. But back here, um, excuse me, you can see the hedgerow that goes right behind the tree. And it's the one that you can see going back there behind the tree in the photograph that we were trying to determine. So those are some of the techniques that I use. But as you can see in other parts, in other photographs like this, okay, that hedgerow is prominent again. And you see it, it cuts off at the top and there's hard to see behind it. Again, kind of the same situation with a photograph that's on the screen. So um, those are just some of the techniques that I use to discover the location of this photograph. Now, what's really cool, um, that photograph, or excuse me, the tree that's there now is, in my opinion, the actual witness tree. Um, let me see if I can kind of dig in through my photographs here really fast because um, I was just up there. Yes, here we go. I just took a picture of this tree. Now I'm going to try to get this glare. Can you guys see that? Okay, it's kind of uh, it's kind of hard to see because of the green screen. It's kind of messing with it. But that tree is the actual tree that is still there. 
I mean, it's shaped the same. And um, so why is that important? Well, that tree is photographed. It's a witness tree. And it was photographed two or three different times. Um, so, and there's bodies in every photograph. So it makes it very significant. And that tree becomes very important. And that tree is being attacked by carpenter ants. So I'd really like to save that tree. And I had somebody come out there who was an arborist. Um, pardon me. And they verified that it is a toilet poplar. They believe it's a toilet poplar that's in the in the photograph. And um, the, the shape of the tree is it's just in, undeniable. So there we go. So we're gonna we're gonna head up here to some of these comments. It's even on the Batchelder map, a very distinctive tree. It is that is correct. John Batchelder, um, uh, when he did his map of Gettysburg, he put prominent trees on that map. So it's all hand drawn, but it's if 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 there was a prominent tree, he put it on the map, and he did that with this tree. He also did it with a tree. This photograph, which I also discovered. <laughs> um, this on the cover of the book. Uh, this photograph had not been determined the location of that. Um, and uh, I uh, independently on my own found that that photograph as well. And at the same exact time, my dear friend Scott Fink uh, also made the same discovery. We found it pretty much independently at the exact same time. Very neat, very cool stuff. But it's important stuff that we save you know, these trees, because we, they, they tell a story and right here and in right in front of you, this, this incredible, um, photograph showing you the cost of the war, um, and why it is so important is these guys laying right there. Um, and there's so much information that can be gleaned from this. These are Confederates probably from the 10th Georgia. Um, and, uh, they have a story to tell. They were family. They, they, they were somebody's father, somebody's brother, somebody's son, you know, um, and they lie there unnamed, unknown. And who knows if they were ever identified. Um, so this is why what we do is so absolutely important. And uh, I and get on. I hope you can get on board with with helping, you know, to preserve, the, you know, the history. And how can you do that? Well, you can you can donate to the PCWA. We're going to have a place where you can do that on our website. It is the PCWA.org. The website is not live just yet. Um, it is it's under construction. Jim did a lot of work on it today, um, and we are hoping that everything is live by September fifteenth, where we'll be able to take registrations for the event. Um, so I know that's a big question people have had, Dustin. When can we get registration? That is coming very soon. But you can also make tax deductible donations because the PCWA is a 501c3 charitable organization. So your donations to our organization are tax deductible. So please consider doing that in the future and, and we'll post the link um, and where you'll be able to make those donations. Those proceeds will go to the battlefield preservation and things of that nature. <clears throat> All right. My home is on the actual battlefield, both Tennessee and Alabama. Marched right through three stages and captured Richmond and went on to capture both Frankfurt and Lexington. How outstanding. Lee, you're always offended. It's, you're just one of them, you know, snowflake millennials. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. All right. Same prop gun with bayonet um, that didn't fit the gun. Yes. Now uh, tell them how you found the HOT. <laughs> yes, I found the HOD and it's not on the first day. Oof. Okay. This guys, the Andersonville prison, my wife and I had an opportunity to go there. Um, I was truck driving down in that area and it took me directly past the entrance to the prison. And thank God it was the end of my trip. And my boss said I could go, I parked my truck and I got to walk around Andersonville. What an experience. That place was awful should check it brother you would really like it i'm not sure what you're talking about it might even still be there um are you drinking jesus juice no that's not wine this is rum and coke actually uh we'll be at andersonville uh, the first weekend of october awesome um 
Yeah. So Andersonville is just one of those places. It, it was a, it was a, it was a Confederate prison for federal prisoners. And uh, they were just packed in there like sardines. And it was just horrible conditions, practically no clean water. I mean, dysentery. And these guys were pretty much. Um, oh, thank you. I don't, I don't think I need it though. Thank you. Um, they were um, just very, it was a horrible situation and, and people died. 13,000 people um, died of uh, like malnourishment, dysentery and um, things. And then they were just thrown in mass graves out there, just treated very horribly. And then the commandant um, works um, at the end of the war was hung for war crimes. But, you know, this is one of those things where it's like, did he deserve that? Would he have taken better care of the troops had he had the capability to do that? Because he didn't even have food to feed his own troops, let alone federal prisoners. So, um, yeah, I, I can't make an event like that. And I'm not ready for hardcore campaigner stuff because I'm still 270 pounds. So <laughs> not quite there yet. Um, so guys, uh, thank you all so much for joining me here today. I really do appreciate it. I hope you got some value from this. Uh, and as always, I so, so love talking about Gettysburg. Join me back here on Tuesday at 6 PM. Okay. We are going to talk about the, the 160th battle of Gettysburg reenactment strictly about that. Um, I didn't get to some of the stuff I wanted to talk to you about the town of Gettysburg, things that you can do, but guys go check some, you know, go into Gettysburg, help out the local economy. You know, these guys are, are struggling to keep their businesses afloat, go in there and, and just buy something small and anything helps, you know, um, it, it, you know, support the Gettysburg economy. These guys really do need it. Um, and they would, they, they would definitely appreciate your support. So anybody that would like to come in and hang out with me for a few minutes, click that link that I put up there earlier. Um, I will hang out after the show and, and talk. You won't be on air. Um, what is the name of my regular podcast? It, it is um, Off the Cuff with Dustin Heisey. That is my regular podcast. Check out the in the comment section. If you want to come in and hang out for a few minutes and shoot the breeze, click that link, jump in. You will not be live. Um, if you guys can, please go over to Facebook. All right. Go to BB3, uh, facebook.com slash BB3 TV, like, and follow us over there. Um, and, uh, we would, we do sincerely appreciate your support. Um, guys go to Facebook and check out off the cuff with Dustin Heisey. Um, and, uh, I do not do politics anymore. I don't even touch politics anymore. Uh, politics is just, it's too polarizing. And frankly, I don't care anymore about dealing with that. You know, um, I, I care more about, you know, raising awareness about, you know, civil war history and Gettysburg history and, um, and saving battlefield land. So that's kind of where I'm at. And there's, that's kind of the direction that I'm going in. So thank you guys so much for being here. I appreciate it. God bless you all. And I will see you next time on off the cuff with Dustin Heisey. And I will see you on Tuesday for the PCWA uh, discussion, uh, round table discussion with Chris Anders, Mike Levis, uh, John, Andy, and anybody else that wants to jump in and have their, have their two cents. All right. See you guys next time. Take care. <laughs>